God has left the building. Eli the high priest and judge, his influence great. He ruled over the tribes of Israel's estate, yet his own household he could not control. A permissive father, he did not fulfill his role. The evil habits and passions of his sons untamed. Hophni and Phinehas continued their evil games. To govern his children, he knew what was to be done, but to punish and deny them, correction, none. Eli became subject to his children's will and way. God's character and sacredness of law would not sway. They lost all sense of holiness and meaning, their disrespect for the solemn services demeaning. Though entirely unfit, Eli's sons as priests were placed. In the sanctuary, their open rebellion to God's face. The peace offering from the people they stole. To enrich themselves was their ultimate goal. The sin of the young men was very great indeed. Their corrupt practices, people no longer saw the need to come to the place of worship anymore. The ungodliness and idolatry they could not endure. After making excuses for his son's wicked ways, he could no longer blind his eyes, the Bible says. So he started to rebuke them, but much too late. Their hearts were hardened, that's no debate. God took the matter into his own hand. All those years of corruption, no longer to stand. God had to rebuild what had been broken. No offering or sacrifice could atone them. The communication channel to Eli was shut. So the message of condemnation Samuel got. Thinking that it was Eli who spoke, Samuel sprang to his bedside when the voice awoke. Three times he was called. Three times he says, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel, he was told. Those who hear, it will tingle their ears. I will judge the house of Eli for all those years. What a terrible message for Samuel to obtain. He continued his duties and in silence to remain. He could not tell the message. God forbade. But Eli had a feeling. To Samuel, a question made. Tell me what the Lord to you did relate. The old man bowed in submission to his fate. Yet Eli did not show true repentance for sin. Year after year, God's judgment delayed for him. Eli told the nation of the things to come, but they disregarded the warning as the priests had done. Now Israel went into battle with the Philistine men. They went on this expedition. No counsel from God then. Battle in full swing, the Israelites were defeated. About 4,000 men died. The rest retreated, shattered and discouraged as they returned to camp, wondering why the Lord didn't make them the champ. They did not see that it was because of their sin, why this terrible disaster happened, why they did not win. They said, let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it comes among us, it may save us from the enemy's sword. So into the most holy place, Eli's sons went to retrieve, and shouts of praise for victory. The people believed that they would surely win this time around, but their hopes were soon dashed to the ground. The Philistines were curious about the noise they heard. The Ark was in the Israelite camp, was the word. God has come into the camp, was the Philistines' fear. They knew how the plagues affected the Egyptians there. But they made a fierce attack, then a great kill, the Ark of God taken. God had removed his will. The law of God in the Ark was a symbol of his presence, but the Israelites had shown great disrespect, no reverence. Thus, the glory of God had left the Ark that day, because they grieved the Spirit of the Lord away. Nothing more than a common box to tote, so deep in hypocrisy and idolatry to take note, that no power or strength had remained in it. God had vacated the sacred place he used to sit, waiting for the news of the battle with dread. Eli's heart trembled and he soon fell dead, for a messenger told of the death of his sons, and the ark of God taken, the Philistines won. The news of his sons passing, Eli could bear, but the news about the ark, his greatest fear. His sins had dishonored God, his sons, what a wreck. He fell from his seat and died as he broke his neck. The wife of Phineas feared the Lord. She heard the news of her husband, father-in-law, the ark, what blues. With child, her labor was brought on by stress. In her dying breath, she named the child Ichabod, nonetheless, for the glory of God had departed Israel. Ichabod, or inglorious, her child's name surreal, as if to commemorate this terrible mournful time for the judgment that followed Eli and son's crime. But God had not completely cast them aside. He used the ark to punish the Philistines. His love still abides. In the house of Dagon, the ark they did place. But the next day, they found Dagon flat on his face. Half man, half fish, the idol they put back in place. Yet again, it fell broken to pieces back on its face. The priests and people were horror-stricken indeed. Surely this is an evil sign, so they all took heed. But for Ashdod, a distressing disease, they felt the curse. So they passed on the ark to Gath, 
But things got worse. Then on to Ekron, then Philistia. The result's the same. Get this thing out of here, for our sorrows it is to blame. With trespass offering, the ark was to be sent on, back to the place from which it had gone. With superstition, they made golden rats and tumors. The plagues were very real, definitely not rumors. How great is God's grace towards wicked men. They were compelled to submit to his authority then, but their hearts were not yielded to God at all. We must still yield to his divine grace. Heed the call. The ark was placed on a two-milk cow-drawn cart. Towards Beth Shemesh, the animals began to depart. Not guided by any human hand, the cows turned. To the intended camp, the ark of God returned. The plagues had stopped. This was not by chance. The Philistines had followed the ark. They took a glance. Even then, the ark sat for a while in a field. They still had no sacredness for the ark concealed. After a while, they chose to uncover and open the chest. Many died right there where the ark came to rest. These people then sent to Kirjath Jerim an invite, who passed on the ark to Abinadab, a Levite. The sad thing about this story is that many go astray, not knowing God has left the building, his spirit gone away. From their churches, their synagogues and temples, this story makes for a very good example. For they choose to follow man's way and tradition, to do rebellious, idolatrous things, the sin condition. People too have their body temple in disarray. God has left the building when we choose our own way. Lord, help us your way and will to perform, even when society thinks that doing evil is the norm. Pray and ask God to remain in the building. He will only stay if you are obedient and willing.